Let me, let me show you this scripture, then somehow it keeps coming up inside of me. In, a, in 1 John, in 1 John, in 1 John chapter 3, <clears throat> that, that will really help you and you need to have it uh, inside of you to endeavor to be led by the Holy Spirit. And the, the way, how important it is that leading of the Holy Spirit that you guard your mind and your heart. Remember the Bible says, uh, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows what? The issues of life. So you, you have to guard that. That's where you, that's the place that you hear God. You have fellowship with God through the Holy Spirit. Remember, God is spirit. So he doesn't fellowship with the flesh. He's spirit. And the Bible says, several scriptures referring to the spirit of a man, talks about, uh, uh, like, like John seven thirty eight. it says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. In fact, many times from when I'm speaking about the, oh, the spirit, I, I hold right here. A hole right there. It's a, it's, so, so you hear even things right inside of you by the Spirit of God. I like that. I like it that way. I like knowing things by the Spirit. I don't know everything by the Spirit, but I get to know things by the Spirit. And I like it when I know something. Just inside of you, you know this is how it's supposed to be. But let me give you such a key to help you in your spirit-filled life. Uh, in verse 21, John, 1 John 2, 3, 21, Beloved, if our heart, sorry, verse 20, For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. If our hearts condemn us, condemns us, uh, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. So out of your belly, uh, I mean, I said, uh, you guard your heart, as the scripture says, you guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows what? The issues of life. You make sure that you are walking in that light and that your heart does not condemn you. Because your heart actually is your spirit and is the consciousness of of a violation of spiritual laws or your walk with Christ. It's your spirit. If you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you re, you, to your spirit, actually, you realize that there's something that is not right, right inside of me. And then the next thing, if you are following that leading, you ask him, Lord, what is it? Now that's the person who's walking in the light. All right? But a person who's walking in darkness, they don't know. And that's where we are going, and then we come back to the scripture. So this evening, the Lord impressed me to bring something to your attention. <laughs> and it's walking in the light. Walking in the light. Walking in the light. In fact, I asked the Lord, How, what has that to do with prayer? Everything. <laughs> Everything. Walking in the light. It has a lot to do with answered prayer, prayers. You remember Isaiah 60, very familiar scripture. <clears throat> and towards the end of last year, I got the impression concerning that scripture. Uh, it, it, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you. You know, this was prophetic. Of course, this was I prophet Isaiah, and so this is a prophecy. So he says, uh, the darkness shall cover the earth. People, has it? Yes. Is it obvious of how much darkness there is in the, in the earth? Yes. It's not because it's nine o'clock in the evening or ten, but the darkness, actually the word darkness 
Let me, let me give you some definition of that word, darkness. I think that will help you. Yes, in a moment. <clears throat> it's, it's lengthy, so, but I'll read if you, you know, nowadays it's so, so easy to get these messages, but let me see how much I can be able to cover. Some things about darkness. Uh, darkness, come on, what did I do? Yes, darkness is gloom. Gloom, evil, evil, sin. It's gloom, evil, sin, obscurity. You know, coming from obscure, obscurity. It's night. It's darkness is night. And another one which comes from the same word is a, is a, a ignorance. People are living in darkness. <laughs> You've heard people say that they're living in darkness. Ignorance. And, and this is the big one that we see around is moral depravity. Or depravity. Depravity is a right way. Moral depravity. It's a darkness. Uh, you know, and it is used, this word, many times you find that me- metaphorically used in the, in the sense of ignorance of divine truth. Igno- ignorance of divine truth. You know, if, if anyone knew of the divine truth, uh, why would they want to, for a man to marry another man? Or for a woman to marry another woman? You, you see, that's depravity of, uh, of divine truth. And, and actually, darkness, remember the Bible says, we'll read, we'll look at the scripture sometimes later, but we were darkness. You remember that? We were darkness. That is the sinful nature. It's the total absence of light. It's the total absence of light and lack of spiritual perception. Lack of uh, spiritual perception, a total absence of light and a lack of spiritual perception you know, actually, light equals to happiness. Huh? And darkness equals to unhappiness. <laughs> light equals to, to happiness. Light, darkness equals to unhappiness. And in general, that word darkness is, describes everything earthly or demonic that is at enmity with God. Everything earthly or demonic that is at enmity with God. Anything, the contrary to God, that is darkness. All right? Does that give you some something? All right? So think of this. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. So all that we are seeing, the moral depravity, uh, obscurity, you know, spiritual spiritual darkness or ignorance that of God's, God's work, God's existence. Think about these people. Every single one of us will die one day. Everyone. But how many people live like they'll never die? And they have no thought concerning God and no thought concerning eternity and if it is brought to their attention, they deny it. Yet they attend funerals. That's darkness. That's dark. Yet they attend funerals and they know this person was here today. Some their children, some their brothers, their sisters, their mothers. They know this person was here today and is gone forever. We'll never get to see this person. Yet, they don't think at all concerning their own soul. One has to be completely darkened in their understanding to operate that way, people. Now, can you, th- can you think about this? Now, you and I were born again can think, how can someone not think about eternity? We can reason that way because you're being exposed to light. We're being exposed to light. But can you think about, uh, think about that person They've come out from the funeral. They even cry. But they leave. After they leave there, they don't think about it, about their own eternity. They continue their own evil. 
see these people. There has to be a spiritual entity in operation that person's life because it's not normal. You remember 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4? Oh yeah, let's read that. We'll flow, okay? <laughs> Let me read it from the Amplified Version. Just what I have said. Have you ever thought about that? People who love, and they come, and they, you know, they've come from funeral, and, and something happened, they're just about to die, and then they come back. I remember, they come back, and it's nothing like it happened. Remember Tina telling me of a, a certain uh, relative of, of the in-laws of a certain family, uh, that there's a lady who had initially was, I think, uh, Jehovah's Witness, and then uh, she became a Muslim. And then she was dying, actually. She had been hospitalized for quite some time, and, and she had, I think she had been taken back to the home to die. And uh, she's told, uh, sorry, she will be scared seeing, of course, those are demons, she would be crying and crying. And then she would be asked, why didn't you accept Jesus? She said, no, I'm a Muslim. She died that way. And she's, have you ever seen people scared of demons and they're talking and all that? I saw growing up, I saw, I saw my aunt, uh, my aunt, uh, and I finally get to lead her to the Lord and I grew up, but my aunt will see demons. She'll be talking with the dead people who are there. Was, ah, you know, she's just there and she's talking, but she's not, she's absent minded. She couldn't even recognize people around. But God gave me an opportunity to lead her to the Lord. And I just believe that I'll find my aunt in heaven. But, but that, 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 that's a supernatural power behind darkness. So the prince of darkness is the devil. Look at this from verse 4. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, from the Amplified Version. It says, for the God of this world. Oh, sorry, let's go verse, verse 3. But even if our gospel, the glad tidings also, be hidden, obscured. Do you see that? Obscured, do you remember that definition? Obscured and covered up with a veil that hinders the knowledge of God. That is what? Darkness. Darkness. It is hidden only to those who are perishing and obscured only. To those who are spiritually dying and veiled only to those who are lost. For the God of this world. So you see there's an entity behind. Let me tell you something here before even I say father. The, the issues you are dealing with, with unborn siblings or people you love, close relatives, you should know the devil is behind that. So then don't regard them as flesh and blood because there are demonic forces behind them. So if you want to win in dealing with them, be spiritually minded. See the one behind. Behind that voice. See the, see the one behind that deception. See that behind the attacks. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to flesh and blood. We do not walk according to... For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or fleshly, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You hear of those strongholds, you're dealing with the demonic forces behind all that. So then, so the, for the God of this world was the devil. Do you know who was the God of this world before the fall of man? Huh? Charles says it was him. Are you in the Garden of Eden? 
It was Adam. It was Adam. He was the God of this world with a small g. Remember God turned the earth to him. He gave him dominion. He was the God of this world. But now, when, when that was delivered, the legality word you can use is high treason was committed by man, by Adam, then he turned that over to the devil. So the devil is called the God of this world. And by the way, he is still the God of this world. You and I are not gods of this world. However, when you all operate in revelation, we have victory over him on the basis of Jesus Christ. He doesn't have to dominate you and I whatsoever. Why? We've been given authority in that name. But the reality is this, we know God is not control on this earth. How many think God is in control? Did you all keep quiet? I thought you sing songs, God is in control. Come on, how many think God is in control in this world? Is that what you're telling me? Come on now. Anyway, I don't want to go so much into that. But actual God is not in control. That is a partial truth. That's a partial truth. If you tell me he's in control, even on Monday he killed those people in Meru. I saw an accident. Can you imagine if you come back and there was an accident in that route? Yeah, they were in Meru on Monday. I saw that, I think, waking up yesterday morning. The five people died on the spot. That um, Tarakanithi and all that go in that direction. I can't can think about that. Is God is in control? No. But look at this. He wants us to operate as Jesus, his son, operated on this earth to place the devil where he belongs under our feet. All right? So God is in control. He's, he's in control is not the full truth. But look at this in verse 4. For the God of this world has blinded the unbelievers' minds that they should not disarm the truth, preventing them from seeing. Look at this. Remember, he's walking in the light. Preventing them from seeing what? The illuminating light of the gospel. What happened to you? You have been illuminated with the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ the Messiah, who is the image and likeness of God. For we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves merely as your servant slave for Jesus' sake. Look at verse 6. I like that. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness. Who has power? Light or darkness? Light. Light. You know, I like this thing, think in this manner. When I get into a room, I don't bind light. I switch on the light. I mean, I don't bind darkness. I switch on the light. And you switch on the light, darkness, it doesn't have to, to tell it to go. In fact, you don't see it disappearing. It disappears. <laughs> I had a story. I think I, I said it a while ago. I had a story of uh, the sun was told there's a village. Sun, S-U-N. That is ever dark. Doesn't have light completely. The son say, what? Is there a place like those? That? Yeah, I say, yes, there is. Let me go see. <laughs> have you could say that village? The son went back and said, I haven't found it. <laughs> That's how, look at this. That's exactly how Jesus dealt with demons. That's exactly what, do you remember there's a person who was in the, in the temple for a long time? For years and years he was not in that synagogue. But he had demons. When light came, he said, what have we have to do with you, oh Jesus, we know who you are. Light came. Darkness was exposed. Walk in the light. It exposes darkness. Now look at this, this scripture. Again, I want you to see something here. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness. Do you remember when he said that? Who knows that? 
in the beginning has shown past tense in our hearts so as to beam forth light is within you. Okay, okay, look at this. In connection to what we read in that first John chapter 3, 20, if our hearts condemn us, what does that mean? What does that mean in regarding light? Then it's being obscured by sin, consciousness, violation of the principles of light. The violations within you, so when it, when it, when it is obscure, it's realized like this. Oh man, there's a certain feeling that I just don't like. I literally do this. I've done it for the last 24 years. And of course, I didn't begin immediately, but, but he started teaching me. I can be doing something. And I started, you know, I'm, I'm doing something. Then all of a sudden, I feel sadness inside of me. Now I can do something, continue, but there's that sadness that has remained right inside of me. Then I say this, Lord, would you please let me know what that is? Please, ask, I ask you, forgive me if anything, I've done anything that violates your word. And I'll say right there, and Sometimes it's not even me. It has to deal with someone else. I can bring up a name. I can bring up an image. And I know, so what should I do about that? Should I pray? Should I call? Or should I write down, like even this afternoon, I was writing down, the Lord impressed me. You need to be aware of this and this that has been happening in that person's life. So I write down and then I'll wait. One thing that grieves the Holy Spirit <laughs> is to ask the person, so tell me what's happening. I'm fine. Uh, you sure? Uh, there's this that uh, I'm okay. I think I'm okay. And, and people are not right inside of them. That always grieves. I had a certain individual last week actually uh, met with them when I asked and kept quiet. And I had the spirit of the Lord say, looking at them, and there were two, you know, looking at them, of course, it was a couple. I looked at them, I looked at him, and said word for word of some things that have been happening. And it's not here in my head, and I'm looking, I just looking at that individual, say this and this and this and this, and I see you being in a place. You are the one who's supposed to have stopped that thing by saying what was in your heart, knowing that it was you who was supposed to say, yet you kept quiet, and the things go, went another direction, yet you had the solution. And on and on and on. And, of course, that people what? I think early 40s. And they say, he said, actually, it has happened several times. The wife said this. But this one he was telling me recently was when he was in, in the university. Can you imagine how many years those are? What is that? That is called the word of knowledge. That's a word of knowledge. But, but, but the thing is this, and by the way, it's not for pastors, it's for every believer. Every believer. So the light which shone out of darkness is to illuminate. So when, when, when some things come in, you need to be sensitive to your inner man your spirit, so that when anything, anything has come in there to try to obscure that light, you ought to start asking. Unfortunately, there are believers who are used to walking away with the grieved hearts. Grieved hearts. Why, there's a being a mixture of unforgiveness of, of, of uh, you know, un until they live an unhappy life. I really, I refuse to. I lived a happy, joyful life, living in a slum with no bed, no food in my stomach, weighing 40, I think 40, 47 kilos. 
Can you think about that? When I got married to Tina, I was 50 kilos. 50 kilos. That's featherweight. Big in the spirit, my spirit. I can imagine 50 kilos. I wore my waist to at 28 and a half. Waist. She thought she was going to get to 54 the second day of our marriage. She got shocked. <laughs> and, and nothing has changed much. But I've added, I think, about some, some kilos over the years. Not some, I have. But, but, but look at this then. The knowledge of the majesty and the glory of God are seen in the manifest in the person revealed, uh, the person and is revealed in the face of Jesus Christ the Messiah. Now, let's go. Oh, I wish I had more time to get. Let, let's go back to our scripture. Remember where we were? Our eyes shine. Let's move ahead from there to our other scriptures. In, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13, <coughs> Let's read it out. Ephesians 5.13. Pay attention to it. It's so good. Remember you are talking about what? Walking in the light. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. That's a powerful statement right there. All things that are exposed are made manifest by what? By the light. By the light. For whatever makes manifest is what? Light. Let me see if I can read it from the Passion Translation. Just that scripture. Sometimes Passion has a way of, of putting it out passionately. He says, whatever the revelation light exposes, whatever the revelation light exposes, it will also correct. Whatever revelation light exposes, it will also correct. And everything that reveals truth is light to the soul. This is why the scripture says, arise, you sleeper. <laughs> Arise, you sleeper. Rise up from your coffin. What is your response? Not me. <laughs> I'm not in any coffin. But rise up from your coffin and the anointed one will shine his light into you. Oh my goodness. You don't want uh, God to tell you rise up from your coffin. But all things are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Whatever makes manifest is light. Now, if there is any need, if there is a need of us to be determined to walk in the light, then this is the time. This is the time. That never before. Why? The world has continued to become dark and darker. And darker. Remember, it says the gross darkness shall cover the earth. And what? Darkness shall cover the earth and gross, gross darkness the people. So actually, we find in walking in, in walking in our lives, in our generation, there's so much darkness. And the solution is light. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Let me show you something about Jesus saying some things about that light. Let's go to John 11. Let me see if I can get some scriptures there in John 11. <clears throat> if you walk in the light, there are people... You'll get, you'll come around them and they'll, they'll just, and, and remember they're demons. They'll hate you for that. They'll attack you for that. Walking in the light. Why? Because remember, mm, 
in that Ephesians chapter 5. Are you able to go to verse 12? Uh, Ephesians 5, 12. They'll hate you for that. They'll hate you for light. Because they don't want their works to be exposed of darkness. Look at this. Uh, now, no, uh, okay. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. Go ahead. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. So there are things that they are doing in secret. They don't want them to be exposed. So what do they do? They want to walk away from the light that is shining in your life. And you realize that, why do they hate me without a cause? But that's what happened to Jesus. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. They hated him without a cause. Why? Their works were evil and they didn't want them to be exposed. Why? Because light exposes darkness. You see that? Light exposes darkness. So don't, when having made a decision to walk in the light and you start walking in some places and meeting some places, some people that you have known in the past and you, you feel like you, you sense a rejection towards you. Don't be moved by that. Because their own works of darkness, they're, they're resisting you who's a carrier of light because they don't want their works to be exposed. And you may find that even in your office. And people wonder, it's like, why do they hate me? I mean, what have I done? Oh, Jesus said they hated me without a cause. It was written, actually, they hated him without a cause. So what is that? You haven't done anything except your carry of light, and darkness doesn't like you. light. I thought you were going to rejoice. Because you've gotten a key right there to walk in, in victory. I used to think like, why? What have I done? You know, go to a person, they have a sour attitude and they're looking and say, what have I done? And I used to, initially I used to lo lose my joy quickly. Because I'm now concerned of what have I done to them. Not that I don't care. I really do. But I will not. Someone's grief and, and unhappiness is not going to dictate my joy. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> oh, so I realized before I got married that I wasn't got to, going to get married for Tina to bring me happiness. You know, you look at each other during honeymoon, will you bring me happiness? <laughs> and how she thinks, will you bring me happiness? And then you realize no one carries that happiness to give to any other. <laughs> And that's the beginning of marriage problems right there. So, so no, 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 no. If you are single, you are not incomplete. You are complete in him. Don't be thinking of when I get married, that's when I'll get complete. No, you are complete in him. You are complete in Christ. That's exactly the way it all begins. I am complete in him. If he's a wife, he's not going to bring any portion that I don't have. Or oh, is a husband is not going to bring any portion that I'd, I first chose to be complete in him. And then when they come, two complete people, two whole people, they live good life. Oh, I simplified it. That is like one plus one is two. <laughs> now let's let's go to did I say John eleven? Listen to this, how I was thinking, why did Jesus think in this? How did, how did Jesus answer things this way? Listen to this, what he says. Remember he said, Lazarus is, let's go to Judea again. Lazarus had been sick and then he stayed for two days after he had been told, whom we love your sick. And then verse 8, then verse 7 he says, let us go to Judea again. Then verse 8, the disciples said to him, Rabbi, let the Jews sought to stone you and are you going there again? Huh? <laughs> That's the place which they want to stone you. Are you going back there again? And then he says there, Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? Huh? You know that. If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble. 
Because he does, he sees what? The light of this world. Now, what has that to do with Tony? Have you realized Jesus in many instances didn't answer the, the way people thought you'll answer? Huh? So don't be looking, you know, you have to answer every uh, question that people ask, you know, uh, the way they ask it. Ask them. And many times Jesus even asked a question. Only your teacher who told you can't answer a question with a question. Jesus did. That's divine only. <laughs> That's only divine, only teacher. Teachers will tell you, but you cannot answer a question with a question. Jesus did. Where did the John, John, the, the baptism of John come from? Mm -hmm. No, they said, I think they, what was it that they asked? Anyway, but they, they asked, oh yeah, then, no, no, they asked a question, I'm forgetting what they, they asked. You know, then he, he asked them, so where did the baptism of John the Baptist come from? And then they say, if he said it came from men, or he said they were asking about his authority. His authority. And then he said, where did the baptism of John come from? Or if they say from men, they knew that he was a prophet. If they say, you know, ask question for a question. All right? So if they say that they knew he was a prophet, then they said, they looked at each other and said, let's tell him we don't know. Then he said, they said to him, I don't know. Then he said, because you don't know, then I don't tell you. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's as blunt as it can be. <laughs> that's victory. And they are not 12 days. They're being asked about, they want to stone you, but he said, they are not 12 hours in the day. If, if anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But do you remember in chapter 8, he has said he is the light of the world. In this, if you look at it, you can look at it from, from, from both perspectives. He spoke in two realms. Walking in the day is the light of the world. We have the sun. We have the sun. But actually he has said in John 8 that he is the light of the world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. So look at this. He's not talking about the sun. He's talking about the light being in him. He said the light being in him. The light being in him. And Jesus is the light of the world. So listen to this. One of it in, 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 in essence actually walking in the light is to be conscious of the indwelling spirit of God who actually is representing our Lord indwelling us. In essence, you know, we know that Jesus is in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, but the one who is in us is the Holy Spirit. So being conscious of the Holy Spirit in us enables us to walk in the light. Because the light is in us. Be conscious of that. Wow, what? I mean, how will you know what to do? <laughs> Only if you walk in the light. Chapter 12, chapter 12, he says this. Now I wish, let's see if I can. Okay, this is a really good one. Let's start from verse. Uh, oh, okay. Verse 34. Uh, it says, the people answered him. Uh, you have to go read in the, in the context of it. We have heard from the Lord that, that the Christ remains forever. And how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who's this Son of Man? That's when the voice came from heaven in John chapter 12. Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer, the light is with you. Who's he speaking about? Remember in John chapter 15, I think chapter 16, when he started talking about a little long, longer I'll be with you and a little while I'll be taken away from you. You remember, you remember that? A little while longer, the light is with you. Walk 
while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. And this is very important right there. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Look at this. Light enables us to know where we are going. Where we are going. People, it can be too dark out there. But as long as you have the light, you know where you're going. Let me give you an example. Let me give you a natural, natural uh, thinking, illustration. He is a driver. He left Mombasa at 8 o'clock in the evening, about 500 kilometers away. All right? Okay? He's driving to Nairobi, about 500 kilometers away. You know when he lives, you know Mombasa? Do you know Changamwe? <laughs> Changamwe roundabout. He's taking the route coming towards Nairobi, okay? Changamwe roundabout. Then his lights of the vehicle, his bought his vehicle, do not shine at KICC in Nairobi, do they? You're in Changamwe roundabout and your lights are at KICC in Nairobi. Onya Stadium. Nairobi. Do they? That's 500 kilometers away. Shining your light. Do they? No. No. But look at this. They'll be shining about what? Maybe about some few meters. Maybe three, four meters. And the whole night they will drive for 500 kilometers. Finally, they'll reach their destination. Do you know what that means? Walk in the light that you have. And the light that you have enables you to see where to step. And if you trust that, you'll get to your destiny. On a daily basis, you walk in that light. You walk in that light. You walk in that. I'm going to show you some scriptures regarding that. You walk in that light, just showing where you're going. There you go. You come to Maria Kani. Your lights are not shining at void. They're right there, Maria Khan, with you, a few meters away. You come to Voy, your lights are not in Mtituande, it's right over there with you. You come to Mtituande, and this is uh, 1 a.m., you have some pilau maybe at night or some tea, and you still get back to your vehicle, you drive all the way to Nairobi, and it's in the morning around 6 a.m. or so, you are at Earth River, and you can start now seeing clearer. But for 500 kilometers about, you have been using... Just those meters away of your light. That's a good indication there of how to be led by the Holy Spirit. If you knew everything concerning your future, that will not be your faith. But how is faith? You take those steps. You take those steps. You take those steps. You keep making those steps. You keep making those steps. You'll reach your destination. Great success is in that. You remember Psalm 119, verse 105? Your light, your, your word is what? A lamp to my feet. Huh? A lamp to my feet and a light to my path. A lamp to my feet and a light to my path. If you have a torch, you ever used a torch at night? You don't go this way. If you're in a rural area and you do that way, and there's a drunkard coming over there, you'll hear some, some words, and they won't be words of faith. <laughs> they are curses. <laughs> and on the other day, you know, you're walking in at night, and, and especially in the rural areas, it used to be dark. My, my village has more electricity than this, but of course, it's not all over the roads. But it used to be dark. The dark time was dark. We used to celebrate during the moonlight. Because then you could feel like you could walk around and it's shining, the light is shining, moonlight. But then the, with the torch, you don't go this way. I'm telling you, people can even beat you. You don't go just checking out. No, you use this. And you meet, sometimes you meet with the other person coming the opposite 
they are torches that are just where they are stepping, and then they say, how are you? Fine, good. And you, you, you pass, they pass. <laughs> you pass, you pass. Everyone is, is, is concerned with where they are stepping. That's what the light does. The light enables you to, it says, he walks in darkness that no, does not know where he's going. This is what it means. He was walking in the light. Come on. Listen, he walks in darkness that does not know where he's going. This is what it means. He walks in the light. Knows where he's going. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm walking in the light. I know where I'm going. I'm walking in the light. I know where I'm going. I'm walking in the light. I know where I'm going. My business may look small, but I'm walking in the light. I know where we're heading. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't despise my small beginnings. I'm walking in the light. I'm walking in the light. Though my, my beginning is small, but I'm walking in the light, it will grow bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger unto the perfect day. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The path of a shine, of, of a, the righteous. Let's go, let's go there. Then we come back to that same script. In Proverbs chapter 3. Now oh, I'm thrilled already. What did I say? Is it three or four? It's four actually. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Glory. Verse 18. Look, look at this from verse 17. It's, this is, this is, no, let's go back there to verse 14. You get the context of it. Do not enter the path of the wicked. How is their path? Come on now. Dark. Dark. Their path is dark. Their path is obscure. Okay, you see that. If you respond to me, I'll preach better. <laughs> and do not enter the path of the wicked. How is it? It's dark. And do not walk in the way of evil. How is it? Dark. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Do not travel on it. Just think about you leaving Mombasa. Eight o'clock in the evening, and you're driving to Mumba, to Nairobi, five hundred kilometers away, and you have no headlamps. And you say you'll avoid any police at the road. You don't need to avoid any; you won't reach. <laughs> They'll avoid you because you could have been dead. That's that's what they just think about that. That's how the wicked walk every day. How sad. That's the way the wicked. You, you remember in, in, in um, David at some point, I think it's in a, no, no, the psalmist, in 24. 24. 24. Proverbs 24 is, is not even the psalmist. It's, it's Proverbs 24. 23. So. Let not your heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. I think that's verse 17. For surely there is an end. And then expectation shall not be cut off. Why? The wicked way is darkness. When they look like they are prospering. You remember David crying, God, why does it look like the wicked are prospering? No, they don't. They don't. The prince of darkness is a destroyer. And his work is to steal, kill and destroy. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they do not sleep unless they have done evil. And their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. Can you imagine at 2 a.m. in the night? How can he make someone fall? Sometimes, not all politicians, sometimes you, you think many politicians think that way. They, they say something about this today concerning an individual. Tomorrow they answer in another way. Think like, do they sleep or they are thinking that lie about it? Oh, they're going to lie the following day. That's, that's, that's sad. And then he says this. For they eat the bread of what? Wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But, come on. But, the path of the just is like this shining sun. That's light. Too bright to be mistaken. <laughs> 
too bright to be mistaken. It's like the shining light that shines ever brighter. Unto the perfect day ever brighter. So I may not have much, but I'm walking in the light, the much shall be much. The little shall be much. I'm walking in the light. I may not have seen the end of it, but I'm following what the place that I'm going to see. So every day I'll walk in the light. Every day I'll walk in the light. Every day I'll follow that light. Every day I will follow that light because God is faithful to keep me to the end. And to protect me from all things that if I could have veered off to the path of the, 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 the unjust. No, I come straight right here and I stayed in the light that I have. I'll show you something about that. The way of the wicked is like what? Come on, verse 19. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. They just don't know. People, you can't walk that way. They don't know what makes them stumble. Do you remember what I said when you, uh, sometimes you just, you walk around and, and oh, you're doing something and all of a sudden there's a sadness inside of your, your heart. Or there's a grief in your heart. And then you ask the Lord, Lord, will you let me know what that is? I say, you, you remember when you are talking to so-and-so. Uh, there's a statement that you made there which was not of faith. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember that. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. I remove that. I cancel that. Forgive me. And what happens immediately? Whew. That light is shining bright again. That joy is back. What follows next is the song of deliverance and thanksgiving and praise to the Lord our God. But if you are not walking conscious of the light within you, you won't know what makes you stumble. You know. That's why some come up with the doctrines of deliverance. You're being told of your grandmother did something to the grandmother's aunt. How did you know? And you need this deliverance. And some of them nowadays, the way they're doing it, and they're so-called believers, they say you need to bring some, something to eat. So that you can break that curse. To eat, what is that? A goat. A goat. We'll eat it in your compound. And bury some meat. Then you'll see the prosperity of God. Which God? Of this world. And he doesn't bless anyone. He's Allah and the father of it. Please don't be looking for things that don't exist. Did you hear what I say? Don't be looking for things that do not exist. In darkness, you don't see darkness. In light, you see light. You see, in darkness, you don't see darkness. In darkness, you stay in that darkness because it's dark. In light, you see light. Okay? So don't be looking for things that do not exist. If there is anything, if you walk in the light, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you. Of this is what, this is, the, do you remember this? Yes, Lord, I do. Uh, I want you to, to do one, two, three. Can I tell you something about God? He will never tell you something without giving you a solution. Never tell you anything, something, without giving you the solution for that thing. If you, you, are, you are left frustrated, not knowing what to do, it didn't come from God. That's the devil who visited you. The people who wake up with the dreams and they explain and they think like, what? And they, they say, Pastor, can you interpret that for me? You've already confused me with, <laughs> with your jargon. Why do you dream those complicated dreams? I said, oh, no, I never saw to you with a dream. And you think like, no, this is the most. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Judy, if there's any, any word in English, this is the most jargonified dream I've ever 
coming from jargon. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But this is the most, this is the, the big jargon that I've heard of a dream. And you think like, why did you even think it's from God? Can I tell you how easy it is God's dream? He's not the author of confusion, but the author of peace. He's not the author of confusion. So if you find that any dream is confusing and you're so confusing, uh, just take authority. It's not from the, oh God, from the devil. And I've eaten ugali for a long time to know that uga- eating ugali will confuse you at night. It won't. Did you hear what I say? That didn't come as a result of you eating ugali. I've eaten it for the last 30, 40 something years and it doesn't confuse anyone in sleep. So that, that's it. That's the devil divisiting you in your dream. Just take authority over him and say, I don't care about this dream. And there are those ones who take their dreams to go tell others. <laughs> Is it you was telling me of someone who, t- <laughs> who brought you such a demonic dream? Of her. Can you imagine someone say that I saw you in a dream? And the thing that she was told. I mean, can you imagine if she wasn't spiritually minded and this other person thinks so so spiritual and saying what she saw in a dream, her in a dream, they think like, why would anyone say such to, to the person? I've heard even people say to each other that I saw in a dream having a, an accident and your limbs are all broken. Why would you tell someone, why didn't you, why didn't you pray? And take authority over. Really? I've heard people, have you? When did you get born again? Last week? Maybe. Then you'll hear. That's okay. Be patient. You'll hear. <laughs> There's some believers like that. Listen, walk in the light. You don't need to be in that confusion. Any dream that I find that there's confusion in it, I know it's not of God. I'll, I'll, I know what to do with it. Every, I'm telling you, Personally, I don't know about anyone. Any dream that has ever come from God for me, when I wake up, I, in fact, many times even before I'm out of bed, shoo, I can tell what it is. I may not get the full of it, but I have the gist of it. I know what it is. When I sit further, he can start unfolding it. And when I write it, it becomes even easier to see what he's saying. I know that's an answer to someone. Okay? The way of the wicked is what? Darkness. Let's see if you can wind up. My goodness. Uh, <clears throat> Let's go to First John chapter 5, chapter 1. As you start. Oh, no, we didn't finish John 11, did we? No, we didn't. Let's, let's, I mean, it's not finishing the whole chapter, but there's something there that we didn't read which I intended for us to read. <clears throat> Are you getting something out of this? You know, I'm learning more and more just to obey what the impressions of the Holy Spirit concerning something. And I'm telling you, I wasn't thinking about this. In fact, I had intended to bring you some, I don't know how many benefits of praying in the Holy Ghost. Then we pray in the Holy Ghost. I had that, that I think I stumbled something on saying a hundred benefits of praying in the Holy Ghost, 100. I was just going to say, yeah, I've practiced this over the years. Let me see if we can go out there and read some, some and we pray in the Holy Ghost. And then just when I was through praying, I said, just this impression of walking in the light. You need that. I need that. This is your success. Look, look at this in uh, the verse that you are. You finish this, then you go to the next one, and then... We wind up. All right, so he says this, uh, verse 9, John 11. If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he does what? He stumbles because the light is not in him. Every failure is man-made because there's no failure in God. Failing in God. 
And if you walk in the light, I'm telling you, even when things look, look like they are so different from what you thought in the natural, you'll have victory. Why? You have light. Go to John chapter 1. John 1. In the beginning was the word. We know that. All right. Now look at this then. Uh, let's read. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made. That is talking about Jesus. That means, oh, that, this, this seems so basic, but how many times you, we, we miss it. This means this. Jesus existed before he came on earth. And, oh, this is wonderful. I was reading something different uh, recently in an evening. I said, honey, I want to read this out to you if you can see something about it. You also. And then I read the first time, say, read it again. I read it and say, yeah, I see that. Ask, are you not excited like I am? <laughs> anyway, look at this, yeah? The pre-existence of Jesus before you walked on earth. We see that right there. Now think about this, people. Think about this. <clears throat> Jesus came on this earth. He, he, lived, he was with the Father. He's the, in the Holy Trinity. We know that. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, he put on what we call the incarnation of Jesus. He put on flesh and blood. If you shake your head, I know you understand. He put on flesh and blood for three years. Is that so? Then after that, he was transformed. <laughs> what do you mean transformation? <laughs> Look at this. He was a man for the three years walking on this earth. But do you know that after he left, he's still a man? Oh yeah, he's still a man. He's still a man. It wasn't a, a, a temporary thing for the three years. No, he's still a man. And look at this. The hope of resurrection, we shall look just like when this mortal body shall be changed into the immortality, just like him was raised from the dead. So he's still a man. Hebrews chapter, chapter 4, he says he's, he's able to be touched by the word. Our infirmities, what does, oh, come on now. Oh, read John, read first, first Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. He talks about the man, Jesus Christ. Read it. It's still there. And other scriptures, you can find them. But look at this thing. Do you know what is wonderful about it? There's a man in the Trinity. There's a man in the Trinity. Do you know what that means, church? A full representation. We are, no, is it represent? No, a full Presentation, not represented. We are fully represented in the Godhead. No wonder we can come boldly to the throne of grace because we have a full representation in the Godhead. The man, Jesus. Ah, uh, yeah. Phew, that's for another day. You think you can take it another day? You think you'll come another day? Ah, oh, look at this. Look at this. Let me, let me read quickly so that I can also help you. In, in Revelation chapter 1 verse 2, then I turned to see, remember the, John the, the, in the book of Revelation say this, I call him John the Revelator. Verse 2, then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, which has spoken, I'm the first, I'm the last. All right? Then he said, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven golden, golden, gold, seven lampstands, one like the son of man. He didn't say the one like God. 
is one like the son of man, clothed the garment down to his feet. Was that a man? One like the son of man. That's exactly what Jesus is. Probably looks 33 years. Probably all of us will be like 33 years old. Do you remember Professor Jude on you are 33? You're about to. <laughs> You'll be returned to that same age, 30. <laughs> maybe, maybe, I don't know. I can preach it as a doctrine, but maybe. Then you all who are 20s, you think like, what am about me? You'll be put up, that's fine. <laughs> You'll be brought up to par. <laughs> You'll be upgraded. That's fine. <laughs> we are, when you are in school, when you are too bright, I don't know if they still did that, do that, and you are standard one, you'll be taken to standard three. That's what happens. That's a God kind of principle. Okay, let's go back to our scripture. I hope that thrills someone. Huh? Special believers, oh me, Lord, I've come, me, poor me, poor me, poor me, I've, first, I've done everything poor. God says, no, don't, don't, don't talk that way. We don't have that, that you know, that, that language here that you brought from the devil. I read, some, I read a certain book of a certain person. I don't take them as Bible truth, but you can say they are so scriptural of a certain person who had been taken in a vision in heaven. And he said, <laughs> he said that there was a veil seeing people coming from the earth. There's one man, she, she says, I just saw that man had lived a backslidden life until the end of his life. That's when he kind of recollected himself, the end of it, and he made it to heaven. He didn't know where he was. That's the other person say, he is, you're so earthly in his thinking. I think there's some people, I mean, they refuse to come for meetings. They'll be taught again in heaven. Thank God you won't have to be able to deal with the traffic jam, but somehow you'll be taught in classes. Classes you skipped on earth. <laughs> Spiritual classes you skipped on earth, you'll be brought back there. While others are skiing and all that, you are back in classes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at this. Verse 6. There was a man sent. Oh, no, no, no. No, this, this, maybe this is the last one. It, look at this in verse 4. In him was life, and the life was what? The light of men. In him was life. That is a Greek word for what? Zoe, that is life, and, and the life was the light of man, light of men. What do you think of that life is Zoe? Is a God kind of life, is eternal life. And that life is the light of men. So by receiving Jesus Christ, you receive what? The light. The light, the eternal life. And then he says this, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There are three aspects to that. Darkness could not seize or lay hold of or overcome. You know, in other words, like the darkness does not gain control of it. That's one of it. Another thought is this, uh, the, that one could not uh, the, comprehend, is to perceive or attain, lay hold of with the mind. To apprehend with mental or moral, uh, moral ef effort, the darkness is unreceptive and does not understand it. And the other one is this, the darkness does not quench or extinguish or snuff out the light by stifling it. The, the darkness will never be able to eliminate light. The darkness will never be able to eliminate light. Light. The Christian joy, you know what your joy is? Is in knowing that the light is not only greater than darkness, but will also outlast light, uh, outlast the darkness. 
Your joy is in knowing that the light is not only greater than darkness, but will also outlast the darkness. Oh, that's wonderful. You may have an attack of the enemy, but you know this for sure. That's darkness. You'll stand in the light. You'll stand in faith. And that darkness will not be, uh, light will outlast what? That darkness. And you know by his stripes, you are healed. You know by his stripes, you are healed. It may look like, it may look like he's winning. But if you stand in the light, you know by his stripes, you are, you are, you are healed. It may look like he's winning, but you stand in that light. But you put your feet that, on that light. The light that is within you, darkness has no choice but to flee. Resist the devil, prince of darkness, and he will flee from you who's the light. All right? Finally, I think you'll be complete without telling you this in First John chapter 1. <clears throat> Tonight it seems like he's just teaching. Not just, he's teaching. Not just, I don't want to call it just teaching. <laughs> Look at verse 5, uh, from verse 1. Mm, just a moment. Chapter, did I say chapter 1 or chapter? First John chapter 1. <clears throat> from verse 1. <clears throat> Are you there? That which was from the beginning, is that familiar? which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled. Concerning the word of life, which is what? Light. Light, okay? The life, that is the Zoe. God kind of life. That's eternal life. The life was manifested. By the way, Zoe is not only the quantity, but it's also the quality of life. It's the quality of life God has given to us. God has given us a quality life. Now is and in the, in the glory forever and ever. Uh, the life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father, the pre-existence, and was manifested to us. So he's talking about Jesus being the eternal life. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. This is the message. This is the message, people. Which you've heard from him and declare to you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Oh, you know, <clears throat> it seems like God made this sickness to come on me. Sickness is darkness. You're accusing God of being dark. There's no darkness in him. You're accusing God of carrying darkness. He has no darkness. You know, there's something that I don't like which I hear is common among believers. I just don't like. It just doesn't settle well with me, and God will teach me that which I don't know. I'm still learning. But there's something that is so common among Christians that God allowed it. God allowed it. God allowed it. I became sick. God allowed it. Why did God allow this to happen? I give you the keys. Whatever you permit, I permit. Whatever you bind, I buy, is bound. Whatever you lose, you're loose. So who's allowing? Now, I'm learning. But please, if you learn more than I am, I've learned, and then you show me from the scriptures how allowing, and I know what they do, they talk about Job. That's still error. Job said, the thing that which I fear the most. Fear opened a door for him to be hid. God doesn't allow. All 
Okay. Would you, are we all learning? Yes. Yeah. We, learn, all of us. We need to. The things that I don't accept. Because that tells me this. God has darkness. Oh, yeah, you know. I read in the scriptures. Then there was the spirit, the devil. The spirit from God came on tormented soul. The king. Yeah, but you need to understand. In the old covenant, they didn't have the light we have. How many times is even the devil mentioned in the old covenant? How many times? You can count. But in this, they were listen this to our flesh and blood people. So sometimes they'll mix up God and everything else. He brought evil, God. But God had made it so clear. He is not an author of evil. He spoke due to the law clearly to people. Have you ever wondered that spirit from the devil came to Saul? I mean from, from God. People who have the new covenant, we have more light. The, new, the old covenant was this. Christ veiled. The new covenant is Christ unveiled. We behold him as he is. So look at the scriptures in the light of Christ who has been unveiled. He walked on earth, even people who are walking with him, they didn't know who he was. Oh, they didn't know. He was raised up from the dead. They didn't know even if he's raised from the dead. That's for another day. But this was the point. In God is light and in him there's no what? Can we all agree, people, from this day? Yes. Lord, we believe your word. Is that so? Yes. In you there is no darkness at all. At all. Feel, feel. Oh, is that so? Okay. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Let's see how walking in darkness it is. L listen to this, people. Listen to this. We'll wind up with this. But if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. This for me is like automatic. This for me is like automatic. If I'm walking in the light, because he's in the light, I'm in fellowship with him, the blood cleanses from me from all sins, even those that I don't know I've committed. I thought that was going to thrill someone. I guess you want to go home now. You see that? You see, look at this then. But if you walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Let me ask you something. Do you know all the sins that you commit every day? You know, there are some that you don't know, but you're walking in the light. What? We walk in the light that we have. And because we are determined to walk in that light, God shows us more light. There are things years ago you thought they were okay to do, but if you've been increasing in walking in the light, you realize now that God doesn't permit you to do them. And it will continue that way. You realize, no, I'm, I don't commit. I don't, I don't permit you to talk that way. I don't permit you to, to, to treat people that way. You know better. But I've ever had believers say this. That I, I, I felt like I was so angry at God. So, I felt like I needed like two days without talking to him. Oh, really? You're so carnal. <laughs> now, probably the first time he look at you and he knows that, you know, we need some diapers. <laughs> <laughs> but how many people know that you can do that for in the next five years and expect to grow? You'll open a door to the devil. Huh? Oh, you all kept quiet. People, are, I think we got rid of diapers, did we? Now, if you think, <laughs> I, tell, I tell couples, if you don't talk to each other, you know, you're not talking even to each other. Why are you not talking to each other? You know, I felt like you were so angry. I was so angry. So what? We haven't talked for the last three weeks. Why? Do you pray? As a personal ask, do I pray? If I go to pray, do I hear God? Because I think the first thing God will ask me, go talk to your wife before you talk to me. 
And what do I go? Maybe I'll go. I have to wake up. Honey, forgive me for not talking to you. I'm foolish. I have been, and I asked you to forgive me. Will you? Please. Then I come back. Maybe go back. I've never done that. But, but go back to prayer and say, God, Father, can you hear me now? <laughs> and then you hear him once. Yes, I can. Before then, I couldn't. You had so many diapers. <laughs> but I think it has happened twice. 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 One evening, we were receiving Holy Communion years ago and praying for offering. And then I said, bring your hand, honey. <clears throat> then I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you. Tina and I come before you and thank you. Oh, okay, yes, yes, well, forgive me. Uh, uh, honey, uh, will you please forgive me for the way I talk to you? Yeah, I uh have. -huh. Please forgive me. I shouldn't have talked to you the way I talked to you. So, yeah, I have forgiven. <laughs> Father, <laughs> lines are clear. <laughs> I think I've done twice. Years ago, really, years ago. I think nowadays, we, we've, we've got us. <laughs> <laughs> and seriously, I yes, helped us. Really, seriously, I can tell the, tell, say this with all humility. We've not had issues. No, we've been married. This is our 17th year. Oh, glory to God. And never even once have we stayed without talking to each other. Never, ever, ever, even once. Never. That a person sleeps, you know, facing east and the other one is facing west. No. We refuse that. And you can't talk to each other. If you walk in the night, you, you turn and, and you're breathing and realize, oh, she's turned this other side. <laughs> no. 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 We just refuse that. We refused. And it's not a struggle too. We just refuse. Young ladies, young men, follow that path. It's good. Amen. If you have uh, the best couple start talking to you, you know sometimes you don't talk to each other for two weeks, come and see me quickly. We need to remove that best couple. Get another one. All right? Huh. Today has been so many things. Pre-marriage, post-marriage. And... Now, <laughs> let's finally, sister and brethren, we walk in the light and can I say this something? Very, you'll find that in chapter 2. Very important, verse 9. He who says he's in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. Choose to refuse every kind, anything that violates the love of God. That's darkness. The whole commandment is one. Love Love, love. This is a new commandment. Love, love. That is the new covenant, the new commandment of the new creation, of the light. People walking in the light refuse anything that has to do with strife, that anything that has to do with uh, hatred. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. Who did we find that stumbles and they don't know what is making them stumble? The wicked. Because they are haters. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded their eyes. In conclusion, don't ever accept hatred of any kind. It doesn't matter what the person has done to you. The first words from you not even asking them, God, I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. God, I forgive. God, I forgive. And it will come several times, God, I forgive. I forgive. I forgive him. I forgive him. Lord, I, they don't know what they are doing. I forgive them. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving me words to pray over them. I forgive them. I forgive them. I release them. I don't carry them in my heart. I'm walking in the light. I refuse darkness. I forgive them. I forgive them. What happens? Listen. 
Walking in the light is knowing where you're going. And actually, it's the wisdom of God. It's knowing what to do. And that's exactly what prayer does. You pray to know what to do in a situation. And walking in the light is such a key to know how to do. That means this, to have your prayers answered. And I'm done. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you receive something this evening? To help you walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Refuse darkness. Stand up on your feet, please. Hallelujah. Father, we do thank you. Let's lift our hands and thank him for his word. Thank him. Thank him for his word. Thank him. Thank you, Father, for his word, for your word. Ha ha ha. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and pray in the few minutes in the Holy Ghost. You've heard the word. You've heard the word. If there comes in in the inside of you, oh God, I need to forgive. 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 Ekeda. Ekeda. Ha 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 ha. Yes, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Psalm 119 verse 130 says the entrance, the entrance of his word gives light. It brings understanding to the sin. So you see, it will be so easy for you to walk in the light by being a doer of the word. Whatever the word tells you to do, you be, you choose to be a doer of it. And as you walk in that light that you have received, the truth that you have received and, and endeavor to walk in it and be a doer of the word, you start realizing that light is increasing. It is increasing. You'll have more understanding concerning more things around you. And you keep increasing. You keep increasing as you walk in that. You be a doer of the world. And it becomes brighter and brighter and brighter. In fulfilling the will of God. So take the word daily. And be a doer of it. You don't have to struggle, struggle with darkness. Just take the, light, the word of God and do it on a daily basis, you realize that there'll be no struggle in dealing with the darkness because light in you is greater, stronger than all the darkness that is in the world. And that's the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. Father, thank you for the revelation of your word tonight. The light that is within us, the light that is within us, the word that we have heard over the years. Father, thank you for the empowerment just to be a doer of this word. And thank you for this church standing as the light, the, the city built on a hill. And the light shining in darkness of our communities, of our society in this generation. To be able to do your will, to be able to stand in your purposes, Father, and glorify you in this community, and glorify you in this nation, even as your church rises stronger and stronger in this nation, to have influence in the affairs of life in this nation. Father, as you spoke in the beginning, we proclaim this night of a victory faith. Light be in the name of Jesus we proclaim over our society over this community and garden estate light be in the name of Jesus we proclaim of our nation over Kenya light be in our nation in the name of Jesus father we thank you for the light light of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ throughout our nation. 
I bless your people tonight. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Thank you for light and understanding that has entered into your people's lives. I bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Light be. Can we say it over this victory faith? Light be. Over this garden estate, light be. Over Kenya, light be. In the name of Jesus. You do the same to your family. Light be to my family. Light be to my brothers and sisters and your, your children and all the others. Amen.